Yo, YouTube, what's good? It's Agus. In this video, I wanted to talk about the hero talents that are coming in the war within and just give my take on what these are going to do to the game. Hero talents are an extension of the talent system designed to explore class fantasy. Now, I think this is really cool. Uh, many hero talents are inspired from characters within the Warcraft universe and fantasies that players resonate with. Hero talents are a third talent tree. So it, basically, we have the normal talents. We have PvP talents. And now we're going to have hero talents. I was kind of worried about it being a lot. And if that's a concern you guys have, I think it's going to be fine. The fact that we have more like things to play around with. Just because, you know, in previous versions of the game, we've, we've also had that. So unlike regular talents, you will earn all 10 hero talents on your way to level 80. Blah, 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 blah. All right. So basically, hero talents are designed to more deeply explore class fantasy. Hero talents are completely flexible. They can be changed the same way as normal talents. Hero talents are spent with standard talent points gained from leveling up. Hero talents will still offer choices in the form of choice nodes, which appear in the standard talent tree. Each specialization will have the choice between two hero talent trees, each being shared with one other spec. So that that's like, in my opinion, this is worded a little bit weird. Basically what they mean by that is if you have, let's say mage and you have frost, fire and arcane, there's gonna be every single spec will have two hero talent or sorry it'll have three hero talent trees like if you have three dps specs and it's going to share with each actual spec of mage so for mage for example you're going to have sun fury frost fire and spell slinger so like sun fury would be what is that fire and arcane then you have frost fire which is frost and fire then you have spell slinger which is likely frost and arcane but yeah, anyways, I kind of wanted to go over real quickly just the mage ones. Frostfire Mastery, that's the first node. Your damaging fire spells generate one stack of fire mastery, and your frost spells generate one stack of frost mastery. This is saying for the different specs. So if you're fire and you choose Frostfire, uh, like the Frostfire tree, you will generate one stack of fire mastery. And then if you choose to spec frost, then you'll generate one stack of frost mastery and basically what those two differences are is fire mastery will generate haste by one percent and frost mastery will do mastery by one percent and this stacks up to eight times so i mean this is pretty cool it's literally just free secondary stats and i'm not sure what the direction of the war within will be but usually at the start of an expansion you have pretty low secondary stats so this will be a nice bonus for us to start the season with we're just going to get like a bonus 8% haste and bonus 8% mastery when we do damage. Not bad at all. Then we have our first choice node here on the left. So we get to choose one. Imbued Warding or Melt Down. So Imbued Warding is, as a Fire Mage, bla uh, Blazing Barrier casts an Ice Barrier at 25% effectiveness. And this will also affect Mass Barrier. If you guys have ever played Shadowlands, you know Triune Ward is, this is like a miniature version of Triune Ward. Very nice for Perch Protection, because every time you shield, you're going to get that bonus shield. And even though it's only 25% effectiveness, you're still going to get all the abilities from it. So like the ice barrier, yeah, it'll have a 25% effectiveness absorb wise, but you still get the slow that's tied with it. And it's an extra buff. And then frost, same thing, ice barrier, cast blazing barrier. And it affecting mass barrier is crazy. You can essentially put out six barriers at one time in a threes match. That's crazy. And then you, uh, you have a choice here between meltdown. You melt slightly out of your ice block and ice cold allowing you to slowly move during block and increases your movement speed over time. When ice block ends, it'll trigger a blast wave. That is crazy. And you'll notice a trend throughout some of these talents is that they're like combining certain spells together. Like you use one spell and then it will do another one. You'll, you'll see what I'm talking about later, but I think that's kind of cool. There's a, it's definitely going to make the game more complex because you're going to be getting hit by stuff like, what the hell, the mage just comet storms me and now it's calling down a meteor. So like comet storm now also calls down a meteor if you're playing frost and that's at 100% effectiveness. And if you meteor as fire, then you'll com uh, call down a comet storm at 150% effectiveness. So these kind of talents are pretty crazy. They're combining spells. I think it looks kind of fun, kind of interesting. I don't think either of these abilities on these specs like frost and fire like for one you don't even play meteor in pvp and then comet storm is it's decent on frost so that'll be a nice frost buff to call down a meteor at the same time i i dude that's gonna be crazy actually like i'm kind of looking that is interesting 
So Frostfire Bolt is another one. And you'll notice that it actually replaces Frostbolt for Frost and Fireball for Fire. So that is that is interesting as well because those are very very key abilities for frost and fire like you have your flame accelerant proc on fire which does huge damn frost bolt is like your actual main ability on frost that you 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 spam that a lot so i'm interested if you even have to take that like are you gonna have the option i guess like you could just play the other frost one like you have frost fire and spell slinger so i I'm not sure how that'll work actually because now that I'm thinking about it, I'm, do you even want to spec into to this? Because it's a two second cast and it replaces Frostbolt. Let's see. Um, so you guys already know what Frostfire Bolt does. It losses, uh, launches a bolt of Frostfire at the enemy dealing Frostfire Dam, slows them by 50% and leaves a Fireball dot on them for eight seconds. Frostfire Bolt also generates a stack of the Fire Mastery or the Frost Mastery. So now our other choice note here, Elemental Affinity. The cooldown of Frost Spells is reduced by 10%. And then for Frost, the cooldown of Fire Spells is reduced by 30%. That's interesting. So for like Frost Mage, for example, that'll be Blast Wave, Dragon's Breath, Ring of Fire. That That's actually huge. And then for Fire, the cooldown of your Frost Spells are reduced. So that's going to be Ice Nova, Frost Nova, Ice Block... Is that it but yeah i mean that is actually that is nutty or you could pick between these you could go with flame and frost which as a fire mage cauterize will reset the cooldown of your frost spells with a base cooldown shorter than four minutes wait okay so block has a four minute cooldown so we're gonna assume this works on block if it doesn't then you could even just talent into the the one talent in the normal tree that makes your block a shorter cooldown so you would want to block first before caught always with this talent because then when caught activates you'll get another block or you could play frost and then it says cold snap additionally resets the cooldown of your fire spell so you could like breath snap breath <laughs> you could like double db you could like breath one guy cold snap blink breath the other one or you could like ring of fire snap ring of fire i don't know man i feel like this shit is gonna be so much fun to like mess around with I feel like the skill cap on on classes is just gonna go so much higher casting frost or fire spells increase the dam of your next frost fire bolt by six percent stacking up to five times wait casting frost or fire spells increases the damage of your next frost fire bolt okay so i think you will have to definitely take that uh, or you could take thermal conditioning which is it just reduced the cast out by 10%. Your frost and fire spells have a chance to trigger an additional bolt of frost fire, dealing frost fire damage, and it generates an additional stack of the mastery as well. Okay, so just a chance on your on your spells to passively trigger an additional bolt of frost fire. I don't know what that means. I think it means if you if I fire blast on fire, do I have a chance to send in a frost fire bolt? That like that would be crazy. And then we have excess frost fire reaching maximum stacks of frost mastery. I think that means fire mastery. Oh wait, maybe maybe you do get both. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I I was actually wrong at the start. You get both of the the fire and the frost mastery as as both of the specs i believe so if you're fire or frost and you got on this tree you're gonna get both of those wow that that's crazy how many times have i said that's crazy someone go back it, leave a comment yo whoever leaves a comment for how many times i said that's crazy gets pinned reaching maximum stacks of frost mastery causes your next phoenix to cast ice nova <laughs> when you consume excess frost the meteor of cooldown is reduced by five okay so you you reach what is it eight stacks of frost mastery and then your next phoenix just ice nova's them and ice nova doesn't dr so you're gonna have a lot of there's gonna be a lot more like roots mage is gonna be rooting a lot more like rotationally now gonna be annoying for melees extra tools into melees and then as frost if you reach maximum maximum stacks of frost mastery it causes your next flurry to nova them as well not bad at all and it's at 200 percent effectiveness so i wonder if that actually makes the root longer too so like when i see 200 percent effectiveness on ice nova i think that means it does double dam and it has double duration so four seconds because ice nova is the the two second nova frostfire empowerment your frost and fire spells have a chance to activate frostfire empowerment causing your next frostfire bolt to always critically strike and explode for 80 percent of its dam to nearby enemies and be instant cast okay so it's just a chance your frost and fire spells have a chance to activate that 
So that's obviously insane because it guarantees crit. It AoEs, which I don't like the direction of every spell having AoE passively baked into the rotation. But we obviously pay, play a PvE game that has a PvP mini game involved in it as well. Excess Fire. Reaching maximum stacks of Fire Mastery causes your next Fire Blast to apply Living Bomb at 150% effectiveness. And then whenever the Living Bomb explodes, it reduces Phoenix. So that'll make sure you're not instant starved as often. But again, Fire Blast now kind of getting like an AoE component to it. Don't love it. But as Frost reaching maximum stacks of Fire Mastery causes your next Lance to apply Living Bomb. And then whenever the Living Bomb explodes, you get Brain Freeze. So that's also really good. But I don't know, man. Like the Living Bomb doesn't do any damage, breaks the CC. Kind of worried about it, but it's all right, I guess. Flash Freeze Burn. Frost Fire Empowerment grants you maximum benefit of Frost Fire Mastery and refreshes its duration. And you get this through activating Combustion or Icy Veins. I see. Yeah, so that'll be nice. Whenever you combust, you will instantly just get 8% haste, 8% mastery. Your next Phoenix will just crit. And then I guess you also just get an instant frost fire bolt with that so that is going to be hella fun your your cooldowns are going to be so strong but yeah let me know what you guys think about these in the comments um if you want me to go over some of the other ones or if you guys want to go over them i'll leave this link here in the description but uh yeah anyways let me know what you guys think i'm pretty excited for this i'm pretty excited